In this tutorial we will be discussing file input. Now as with file output the first thing we need to do is include the right library and that's going to be the same library file stream f stream and then the we also need to declare a file handle that we are going to be inputting in using the if stream um, declaration so in output stream we use of stream in input stream we're going to use if stream for input file stream now the the difference is in input we we need to already have a file sp specified that we're reading from you know you don't want the file to be empty uh, you want to have a file that uh, has data in it so that's what we're going to do we're going to use names.txt from the, the last tutorial and I'll go ahead and open it real quick so that we can add some data we're going to use um, names such as uh, We'll use Zach, um, Troy, Sam, Jim, Mark, and Kristen, and Margaret, Taylor, um, Jake, and um, Sherry, and Francis as the names for our uh, we're just going to basically make a name list. So these are all names, and let's say we're wanting to read these names in from this file and um, store them in a variable. So to do that, we need to know the name of the file and declare a file. So we're going to say, we'll say input file, and we need to declare the name of the file that we're reading from which was names.txt so we're reading from names.txt and as with the output file we just need to go ahead and say if not input file see out file not found end line and let's return a value like negative six so that we know uh, it wouldn't be found and let's go ahead and run it and we got process return zero, so names.txt was found, and it should be because it has been created with all these names in it. And uh, remember, this is just a cautionary thing, so you, if your file for some reason comes up missing, it'll return negative six, and you'll know that it that it's um, gone. And this is again just a a practical way to uh, code your program to look for errors and problems with the uh, with the uh, code. So moving on. Um, Let's go ahead and create something to store these names in. And if you if you want to think about you know the things that we've gone over, probably the perfect thing that we could use is a data structure such as an array, and we can just make one variable, one array, and then store all the names in that array. And so to do that, what we'll do is we'll say. Um, you know, one thing one thing about an array is that we have you could have an unknown number of um an unknown number of names here, but and obviously if, if that was the case you would probably want to use a a different uh data data structure, but since this is a beginning a beginner's course, we're gonna go ahead and use an array and we're gonna assume that we know how many names are in the file. Uh, if I if I teach an advanced course, but, but you know, kind of depending on how how well this one does, if I teach an advanced course, we're going to definitely go into more advanced data structures and a better way to store this data whenever you know the amount of names is not known. But like I said, for now, we're going to go ahead and assume that we know how many names are going to be on this list. So let's count them up: it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's eleven names. So let's just let's go ahead and uh, declare a constant value, constant int size equals 11, and we'll use that for the size of our list, okay? And then let's go ahead and make an array. Like I said, I like to do it's kind of a convention to declare your arrays at the beginning of the function. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to declare the array, and uh, it's it's going to hold string values because these are all string values. Um, 
alphanumeric, you know, uh, multiple character values. So um, we're going to use a string, and we'll say um, names list. We're going to hold size for the value, and we're just going to declare it just like that. As um, actually, we're, I think the better way to do that would say equal, and then brackets, and then just do that, just like that. And if we run that, that should not get a, give us an error, and it doesn't. And the reason why is because code blocks and most IDEs will see, see this as instead of having to basically do empty strings 11 times to declare this array, if you just put one empty string in there, code blocks goes ahead and assumes to set all the default values to this, an empty string, which is what we want. We, we want the strings to start out empty so that we can put new ones in their place later. So that's basically we're initializing this array to a bunch of empty string values. That being said, let's go ahead and get to where we can read in these um, this these file names. And to do that, the best way to do it is with a pre-read and a post-read within a while loop. And you can play with this you want and kind of figure out the best way that you see fit, but when you do it with this while loop, you're going to realize that the pre-read and post-read is actually the best way to go about it because oftentimes if you don't use a pre-read and if you don't do a post-read, you're going to figure out that either you're going to read the last name twice or you won't read the first name at all. And uh, so that's why I like to use this strategy to read from uh, text files. And I'll show you exactly what I mean in a second. So, so beginning with the pre-read, this is going to be the pre-read, and we'll go ahead and comment that. We'll say pre-read, and if you didn't know, I know we haven't discussed this yet in any of the other tutorials, to comment code, you just use uh, double backslash, and that will comment code. So if I, I, if I write double backslash, I can write whatever I want, and it won't affect the code at this point. So... To kind of keep track of what you're doing, it might be a good idea to actually comment your code, especially when you get to pre-reads and post-reads, because uh, it'll make it easier to read when you go back and look at it. So starting with the pre-read, you're going to use the the file handle, which is input file, and then you're going to use the input stream operator, which is greater than, greater than, if you remember, um, cn operator. And then you're going to store the the um the 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 name the string from names.txt sorry i got my i got my uh, words uh, twisted there for a second you're going to store the string taken from this file into a variable uh declared here now it it's not advised to put this straight into a straight into an array so what we're going to do is we're going to just going to say string um temp name and we're just going to leave it like that. And we're going to put it into a variable called temp name. So the first time it reads, it's going to read Zach. And it's going to store it here into temp name. Okay. Now let's make a while loop. And this will all make sense after uh, we're done coding it. And you'll see why. So then we make a while loop. And we say while not input file dot eof parentheses and this dot eof is a function and we'll go over more with functions in the next tutorial but it stands for end of file so basically this condition says while input file is not at the end of its file so basically when it reads through the cursor starts here and as we read through it the cursor is going to move like this all the way down through this file as this while loop continues until the cursor gets to here at the end of Francis and that's considered an end of file because there's no more text in this file and uh, as long as it's not at the end of the file this while loop is going to keep looping so that's why I like to use uh, for my loop and while it's not at the end of file go ahead and hit enter a few times comment post read and we're going to say do the same thing as the uh, the pre-read just temp name. And this right here, this pre-read, this post-read, and this while loop is your basic setup for file 
input. And I know right now you're saying that is really complicated. It doesn't make sense. But this is the best way to receive input from a file. <coughs> and you'll see why. I want you to play with it and see if you can figure out a better way to do it. But I think, I think once you play with it for a while, you're going to realize that this is definitely the, the cleanest way to receive file from a, uh, receive text from an input file. So let's go ahead and continue on. And you always want the post read to be the last thing in your while loop and your pre read to be the first thing or the, the last thing before your while loop. So you never want anything in between your while loop like right here and your pre-read and you never want anything in between your post-read and the end of your while loop right here and that's just a golden rule for file input so but anything anything that you want to do um, you know data processing wise can go in between here and that's exactly what we're going to do so we're going to say we're basically going to say input or we're going to say how about this the name was names list, so we'll say names list. Now let's go ahead and declare an integer value, so we'll say int index equals zero. We're going to say names list index, so it's going to start at the first value in uh, names list equals temp name, and then we'll say index plus plus. And what that's going to do is it's going to go through each name in this file it's going to start with Zach and it's going to start at index 0 go to the first uh, index and names list and it's going to store Zach because Zach is being held in temp name and then it's going to add one to index it's going to do the post read it's going to go back up to the top of this while loop and it's going to put the next name on the list uh, Troy into our array and, and if you don't believe me we're going to hit run You'll get no errors and nothing happened. So as of right now, there's no output, but I promise you it just populated the whole array, our whole names list array, with the with the names in this file. And to prove it to you, we're going to use a for loop on the outside of this while loop. So we're going to say for int, we'll just call it i equals to zero, i less than size, i plus plus. And then we're just going to go through this uh, this loop and prove to you that names list is populated with the names in our names.txt file. So we'll say names list i end line. And if we run this now, it's going to output our array. And uh, right now it just says Francis. So let's take a look at what went wrong there. So something's going wrong with our names.txt. So we have we have Francis here. Maybe I believe it has something to do with the way we declared this array with this empty string. So let's see if we take this out if that will fix it real quick. Let's hit run. And it and it still says Francis. So we're having an issue with our with our um array declaration because I know for a fact we're getting the input file and we're storing it in temp name and then we're using the index to um, there there's our problem right there so so obviously if index is at the beginning of the while loop then and we're declaring it to zero then each time this while loop runs it's going to set index back to zero so what we need to do is we need to take this index equals zero out and put it on the outside of our while loop. That way it's only declared to zero once. Now when we run our um, program, we will get all the names in our list. That was a minor, um, that was a minor mistake. Obviously it uh, completely changed the output of the program. And so you really got to look out for that stuff. And um, if you didn't really get the mistake, uh, like I said, we had index equals zero at the top of our while loop, so every time this loop ran, it was setting index back to zero, which is why it has to be on the outside of our while loop. But uh, I think you should definitely go through this program uh, several times because when I first started C++, 
I found file input is a pretty complicated topic. Now, what I want to discuss is these tips and tricks for advanced file input, output, manipulation. And these techniques are going to help you whenever you get in funny situations. And the first technique I want to talk about is if you get a file with something like this. Now this is a header and many files have headers but if we run this program right now and we change for instance we would have to change this to 12 before we did it but if we ran it it wouldn't crash but we would get well let me make sure that I have this right so yeah so so let me save it first because I haven't saved it but if we save it now now it's saved and we ran it again now we get names up here. So we, we read in this, but, but what if we don't want that? We don't want to populate our array with this header. We just want to ignore it. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a function called ignore. So let's change this back to 11. We're going to go down here, and before our pre-read, we're going to specify with a function that we want to ignore that header. And to do that, we, use, we access the function with our input stream file handle, which was input file, dot ignore, which is a function. In this function, it has two parameters that we need to use. The first is the amount of characters that we want to ignore, which is 255. And the reason it's 255 is because in a console window, in a C++ application, in the console window, there is 255 characters on each line. So if we specify 255, then it will ignore this whole line in the console window and the cursor will be moved to right here, right before Zach. And the other uh, parameter that we want to specify is what's known as a delimiter. And that's a character that says if you reach this character, then go ahead and start reading. Quit ignoring. And this is a new line character, and uh, later in this tutorial we're going to go over this in depth because this is also a formatting, advanced formatting option that I want to discuss with you guys. But this is a new line delimiter, which means basically if you get to the end of this line, you're going to reach a new line character. I want you to quit ignoring because when you get to a new line character, you're going to end up right here, right before Zach. So that's what the delimiter does. So now if we run this program again, with the ignore function in, we only pick up the names that we want and it ignores the header just like we wanted it to. So moving on, I want you to go ahead and memorize this function because you will be using it a lot more than likely with file input. But moving on, we're going to discuss this guy right here, these uh, special formatting characters. And we're going to do that here at the bottom of our main function. We're going to say something along the line. Let's give us some space. We're going to say this is a new line character. And then we're going to put several of these in. Those are three new line characters. Backslash in, backslash in, backslash in. And essentially what we're doing is by putting these backslash ins in with our screen, it's not going to print these. These are basically the same thing as saying this. But instead, we can just use the formatting character with the backslash n and accomplish the same thing. And if we run it, you'll see exactly what I mean. We get three new lines right here below our output because we added these new line characters. So let's move on to another example of uh, these special characters that we can use. We're going to uh, use the formatting tab character. And we'll say this is a tab character. And then we're going we're gonna to enter in four tab characters, which are backslash t's, and we'll say tab. And then a couple of backslash n's to give us some space. Because remember, those are the same thing as new line characters. And these are going to be our tab characters, and you'll see what I mean in a second when we run it. So we run it, and you can see all this space in between tab and this is a tab character. And that's where these backslash t's come into play. So that's a special formatting option you can use. The other one that I want to show you is quotation marks. We'll say this is a quote and we'll do backslash quotation 
and we'll say quote backslash quotation and then a couple of new line characters in the quotation marks. And what this backslash quotation does is it escapes the string and it puts these in because if we take out this backslash then it messes up our string. So we have to have that in there and this is just a special formatting option and when we run it you'll see we'll be able to actually have quotations in our output and says this is a quote and then has quotation marks quote. So that will be useful to you in the future whenever you need to use these escape characters and there's plenty more of them that you can use and I suggest that you probably go try to look up some of them and see what you can do with this output. Okay, moving on, I want to go ahead and discuss one more thing with you, or actually, let's, we're going to do a couple more things, but, but one more with file input um, before we continue, and that is, we're going to go to names.txt, and what if we had something like Troy Hodges here? Well, Troy Hodges, that's a last name, and if we change this to 12, I'll show you what happens when we actually run this. So we'll run it, and instead of saying Troy Hodges, oops, we need to save it real quick before we do that. Okay, so there we have it saved. Well, let's run it one more time. And instead of saying Troy Hodges, it says Troy and then Hodges on the next line. And that's not what we want. We want the whole name on the same line. But what's happening is, in a file, as soon as the scanner gets to a white space character, it assumes that that's the end of this, of what we're reading, and puts that into our temporary variable. So what we, need, what we need is a function that will read this whole line and put that in a single variable. And that's what we're going to use. So just like we used input file.ignore, we're going to use another function called getLine. And we're going to put it in our pre-read and post-read. And the getLine function, all you do is type getLine, you specify the input stream that you're using, which we're using input file that we specified. And then you specify the variable that you want to hold the string in or the line in, which we're calling temp. And we're going to do that for both of these. We'll say get line input file comma temp. And that changes our our pre-read and post-read to where it reads in a whole line instead of just a single string value and when we run it you'll see the difference now we get Troy Hodges on one line whereas before it was it was separated into two separate variables now it's holding this whole value in one index of the array so that's the get line function and then the other one last thing I want to show you is what's called the IO manipulation um, library which is the input output manipulation library and if you include that include IO manip you can do some really cool things with output and I'll show you what I mean so we'll come down here and we'll say C out left which specifies a left alignment we'll say set precision to 2 and then fixed. And what this does is it specifies left alignment, set the precision to 2, and what that means is that decimal values will only hold two places, or any value for that matter. So if you have the number 200, it's really just going to look like 20 because it's not going to hold that other zero. Well, what fixed does, fixed says, Take this set precision and only apply it to after, to the right of the decimal place. So now if you have 200, it will hold the whole number 200 plus 0 .00. Or if you have 200.134, it will only hold the value 200.13. So let me show you what I mean. We're going to make a double value, 201.792. And we got to give that a name. We'll call it double value equals. And then we're just going to output that. We'll say C out, um, end a couple lines, and we'll say double value. And when we do that, you'll see that we only get 201.79 and not 201.792. And that's because we used this IO manipulation technique to set the precision to 2 after the decimal point. 
That's exactly what we did. And one last thing I want to show you is what's called the set width. So we're going to go ahead and make another value called int integer value equals seven, 227. And what we'll do is we'll say C out. Um, we'll, give it a, we'll give us a little bit of space. We'll say C out set W specify 25, which is 25 characters. Then we'll say double value. Then we'll say set W again 25. And we'll say integer value end line. And what this does, this sets the width to 25 between each value of output. And you'll see what I mean. When we run it now, we get 201.79, a width of 25 characters, and then 227. And then if you if you printed out something again, you would have another width of 200 of, of 25 in between it because we we specified to put another one right here. And that's exactly what that does. So I suggest you play around with these advanced output and input manipulation techniques and uh, you'll learn that you can do some really cool things. So thank you for watching and stay tuned.